Okay, so now we're going to be putting together the Z-axis assembly and we're going to start with the Z-axis uh, rail support piece. This is actually the back. You'll see these counterboard holes and this goes against the, the, Z, the, the YZ plates. So since we have these uh, counterboard holes, we want uh, the screw heads to be sitting flat so it doesn't rub up against this piece when um, the rails are on these uh, V-groove bearings. With that in mind, when we're putting this together, we want to make sure that the rail side is oriented like this. And also, this is not symmetric to the, um, the holes are not symmetric uh, with respect to the edges of this rail, so you can't put it on this way. It will, the holes will not match, so you have, it only goes in one way. So make sure that when you when you have this, the non-counterboard holes are on this side and the counterboard holes are on this side. So let's put the rail together. We'll be using one inch screws uh, to fasten the rail. You want to keep it loose so the rail can still be adjusted back and forth for any final adjustments to align it properly. And now we'll do the same thing for the other side. All right, to ensure that the rails are aligned, well, it's probably good enough to just lay it down here and, and tighten them so they're perfectly parallel to each other. Okay, for the router mounts and the motor mount, we're going to be putting the, um, the parts on this Z-axis rail assembly in this fashion. So we have a, a large um, squarish piece here. The lower router mount looks like this. The one in the middle or the top router mount looks like this. And there's a piece here that um, takes the Z-axis stepping motor. And then you have a bearing. Then you have a bearing mount at this location here. And the shaft will go through all the way to the top and then it'll connect to the ZY plate. So the first thing we're going to do is put these together and put this on the rail assembly. Probably doesn't matter which one you put on first. You can put this on to the rail assembly and then put this on, or you can put these two together and then put this on to the rail assembly. I'll probably do it this way, put these on first and then do, do the rail assembly since it might be easier to get these cross dowels in and have them stay in while we're doing this. We're going to need two one, -half, one and a half inch screws and a cross dowel. Okay, these can be tightened all the way. Now we're going to put them in here. And we'll use We'll also use one and a half inch screws to fasten this piece onto the Y, the Z axis. And on the top, we'll use regular nuts. I use this just to keep the nut from turning when I'm tightening these. Okay, and we're, now we're going to be putting on the top router mount and the stepping motor mount for the Z-axis. This will go on with this small piece. It will do it the same way as we did this one. And you want to make sure that the, the mount is oriented like this. The top mount, if you're looking at, looking at it, straight on, it should be to the left. So make sure it's it's on this side. We'll be using one and a half inch screws, and these are quarter inch screws. And cross dowels. Okay. 
And now we fasten it to the Z axis. We'll use three one and a half inch screws. And we go into these three holes here. Just line it up and then use three quarter inch nuts. Okay, so before we put this last piece in, which goes right here, we need to put the bearing into the seat. We'll have little opportunity to do it after the motor goes in. The space will be limited. So you just pop it in there, really tight. And we can go ahead and put this on, and we're going to use one and a half inch screws and cross dowels. You'll want to put the cross dowel in this orientation so you'll be able to adjust it if you need to. Okay, so we can actually take this opportunity to put the motor on because it's a lot easier to put the motor on before we put it on the machine. But before we put the motor on, we need to put on the coupling. It's a quarter inch to a half inch coupling. We'll put on the coupling. We don't actually have to um, tighten it down yet. We just need to get it into this location because it would be near, nearly impossible to get this, this uh, coupling on in, when the motor is in position. And we'll be using eight inch screws I'm sorry, a number eight screws at one and a half inches in length. One and a quarter or one and a half inches will work. This screw is very difficult to get into um, the spot that it needs to go and it's, you're just going to have to feel for it. Alternatively, you can put the motor on before you put this piece on. You can get to these screws a lot easier, but it's not impossible to do. We're not going to tighten these up all the way. We're just going to loosely tighten them so we can still adjust it if we need to when the lead screw is on. Okay, now we can finally put on the Z-axis on the ZY plate, just put the one set of, uh, put the rail on one set of bearings, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these, these bearings and push them against the rail, and then screw these tight, not tight, but finger tight, and then you're gonna, um, you're gonna tighten these nuts, and after these nuts are tightened, you'll be able to run it up and down, and we're gonna now put the lead screw in. And remember that we we kept this loose so we can maneuver it this way to adjust it. And we can also maneuver this in this direction to make sure that this is perfectly uh, level. And we also have to put in a collar and a bearing. Make sure you go pretty much all the way down. So the first thing we need to do with this assembly, the lead screw assembly, is make sure that the the coupling is tied up against or pushed up against this bearing. And to do that, I'm just going to use a standard pair of or standard screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and we have it pretty much flat up against that. We're going to tighten this. We're going to tighten the set screws of the coupling. Okay. Tighten both really tight. Now we tighten the ones, the set screws to the motor, to the motor shaft. And finally, we're going to tighten the, the collar and push the collar down while you're doing this. So it tightens up against the bearing. Now we have the bearing and the assembly 
maneuver this. So we're trying to get the, the lead screw at a perfectly vertical orientation. And as we know, we have this kind of um, loose, the, the motor. We have the nut loose over here. And the next thing we need to do is adjust the, the nut mount so we have the nut mount perfectly centered with the lead screw so the lead screw doesn't rub against the side of this the mount and we can go ahead and tighten the mount down pretty tight you want to get this as tight as possible you might also want to put um, washers on this location so you can get it pretty tight and then we're going to to fasten the nut the anti-backlash nut onto this and make sure you have it in the in a good um, vertical position. We we'll use two number eight, and this is one and a one and a quarter. We'll be using um, a washer, the nut or the the screw, and then number six nut. And we're doing it this way so we um, we can bring the z-axis up as much as possible to this point. Probably use a either a short screwdriver or use a screwdriver like this. Put this on. Probably would be able to get away with a short screwdriver. This part of the assembly um, with the motor mount, it relies on having the actual motor inside to stiffen this whole thing up. So we'll put the, the router inside all the way till it meets this edge here. And we're going to be using two and a half inch screws with a washer on one side, put the screw in, and then we'll have another washer on the other side and a nut. We'll go ahead and tighten this down. And these these router mounts were put to the extremes of the router, so uh, it would be able to give the maximum stability. Right. 